Trump is paying a $200 million criminal fine as part of a federal investigation into a years-long bribery scheme involving jobs, contracts and payments to allies of Illinois House Speaker Michael Madigan, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago announced Friday. Madigan, a Southwest Side Democrat and the nation's long-serving speaker, has not been charged with any wrongdoing. A Madigan spokesman could not immediately be reached for a comment. Prosecutors alleged that Combs admitted that its efforts to influence and reward the high-level elected official included legislation that affected the regulatory process used to determine the electricity rates Com charged its customers. At a news conference, U.S. Attorney John Lausch said the filing speaks volumes about the stubborn nature of political corruption in Illinois. Prosecutors described the alleged scheme. The company admitted that it arranged for jobs and vendor subcontracts for public official A's political allies and workers even in instances where those people performed little or no work that they were purportedly hired by come to perform. The U.S. Attorney's Office said in a statement. In a criminal filing, prosecutors say public official O was the House Speaker, which is Madigan. The veteran 13th Ward Politicians Associates received $1.32 million from 2011 to 2019, prosecutors said. Politicians reacted Friday after the major federal announcement. At an unrelated news conference in Waukegan, Democratic Governor J.B. Pritzker said he was deeply troubled and frankly I'm furious about the reports of the federal case involving Cumden Madigan. The speaker has a lot that he needs to answer for to authorities, to investigators and most importantly to the people of Illinois, Pritzker said. If these allegations of wrongdoing by the speaker are true, there is no question that he will have betrayed the public trust and he must resign. Pritzker urged Madigan to fully cooperate with the investigation and answer all questions as quickly as possible. Most read, Chicago Public Schools proposes hybrid of online and in-person classes for fall, despite union opposition. When I think about the possibility of people committing these kinds of wrongdoings, I think people who are in public service need to live up to the integrity of the job they were asked to do. He said a criminal complaint filed Friday charges come with one count of bribery. Under a deferred prosecution agreement, prosecutors will drop the charge if the utility cooperates with authorities and abides by certain practices. Prosecutors put a value of $150 million on the legislative benefits Cumd received. That included a 2011 bill in which Cumd was able to more reliably determine rates it could charge customers and a 2016 renewal of a regulatory law that governs how Cumd does business. U.S. Attorney John Lausch called the $200 million penalty the largest criminal fine in the history of the Northern District of Illinois. Read the criminal complaint, prosecution deal cut by Cumden case connected to Speaker Mike Madigan. In a statement, Cumden's parent company, Exelon, said it said it had cleaned up its lobbying practices and noted it had pledged to fully cooperate with the investigation. Most read, Coronavirus in Illinois updates, CPS proposes hybrid of online and in-person classes for fall. Governor J.B. Pritzker goes to court to require school children and staff to wear masks. In an interview with the Tribune, Exelon CEO Christopher M. Crane added, We take this seriously and we corrected it. It should never have happened and it won't happen again. He said that he believed that everyone who orchestrated any of that behavior had left Cumd. The agreement with federal prosecutors says Cumd can't seek a tax deduction in relation to the fine and can't recoup it through surcharges, fees or any other charges to customers. Crane said the Exelon would give Cumd the money to pay the fine, and then Cumd would pay Exelon back from its profits. 
The federal filing says authorities could have fined combed between $240 million and $480 million. But the utility got a discount off the bottom of that range for substantial remediation and cooperation. Half the money is due in a month and the other half in three months. The come charge and fine come more than a year after federal authorities raided the homes of several Madigan allies. The Tribune first reported last December that federal authorities have asked questions about Madigan and his political operation as part of an ongoing investigation. According to four people who have been interviewed. Most read, column. Trump is right Joe Biden will abolish the suburbs. And no one will be safe. The sources, all of whom requested anonymity, said FBI agents and prosecutors asked about connections between Commonwealth Edison lobbyists and Madigan. Lobbyists giving contracts to people tied to the speaker, and city, state and suburban government jobs held by his associates. They also said authorities had numerous questions about the speaker's relationship and dealings with longtime confidant Michael McLean, a former cum lobbyist. In October, the Tribune reported that the federal investigation into cum's lobbying activities centers on whether the utility giant hired politically connected lobbyists to curry favor with lawmakers in exchange for favorable action at the Illinois Capitol. As part of the investigation, authorities were scrutinizing certain cummed executives and have zeroed in on payments through the company's vast network of consultants to some individuals to seemingly circumvent lobbying. Disclosure rules, a source said. Some of the people who wound up being paid seem to have done little actual work, the source added. The federal investigation into Combs lobbying efforts put a spotlight on one of the most exclusive rites of passage in Springfield. Democratic lawmakers and top staffers to Speaker Madigan leaving state government to push the utility giant's agenda in the halls of the Capitol. Most read, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot calls White House Press Secretary Kelly Monk a Nani Caron in the latest round of vitriol. In 2019 alone, the lobbying team for Cumden Parent Company Exelon included nine former Democratic lawmakers, including two recent members of Madigan's leadership team and the daughter of a former Cook County Democratic chairman. Also on the list was a former Madigan political director and two of the Speaker's former legal counsels. Cumden Exelon enjoyed considerable success at the Capitol during the last decade, persuading the General Assembly to approve a smart grid overhaul and a bailout of the nuclear power plants in downstate Clinton and the Quad Cities with consumers helping foot the bill. Those wins took place under Pramagiori, who led Cumden was elevated to CEO of Exelon Utilities. The utility employed an army of lobbyists and sprinkled millions of dollars in campaign contributions to legislators, with the companies consistently among the top corporate donors in Illinois. Pramagiori spokesman Brian Locke declined to comment on whether she is cooperating with federal authorities. Ms. Pramagiori has done nothing wrong in any inference to the contrary is misguided and false, Locke said in a statement. During her tenure, she and other current and former Cumden Exelon executives received, evaluated and granted many requests to provide appropriate and valuable services to the companies, none of which constitute unlawful activity, Locke wrote. Most read, what is herd immunity? And how do we get there on COVID-19? Madigan, 78, is the nation's longest serving state house speaker. A post he has held since 1983 with the exception of two years when Republicans took control of the House in the mid-1990s. Known as the Velvet Hammer, the Southwest Side lawmaker has been in the legislature since 1971 and is regarded as one of, if not the, most powerful politicians in the state with the single-handed ability to control the fate of legislation in the General Assembly.